All right, guys, welcome to Catapult Carnage. My name's Chris. Today, we're just going to do a Q&A video. I've recently got 20,000 subs, which I'm delighted about. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. I put a post up on my community page of my channel, planning a Q&A, drop me your questions. So we'll go through some of them now. It might help a lot of you guys, or you know, you never know what sort of useful information you might get from this video. So let's start off, T. Allen. What's your method for stalking rabbits on foot, not in car? I've got so I've got the accuracy to take them, but can't seem to get anywhere near the effers <laughs> before they dash. <sighs> yeah, it's a tough one. It's not really the skill of the shooter at stalking them, really. I, I have a video from earlier this year on stalking rabbits, hunting them on foot, and it's basically just using cover to get close enough. So either the rabbit needs to be in cover or you need to be in cover to get the shot. You know, you can't just walk down one in an open field. They're going to run off. So if you're hunting them in a field, they'll normally be close to the hedge anyway. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the other side of the hedge and try and go down the hedge quietly and see can you get a shot through the hedge. If the hedge is too thick, you're not going to be able to do it. My video from early in, earlier in the year, it was around Easter time, this year 2019 it was sand dunes and I got two rabbits that day you know I was hunting probably for five or six hours the rabbits were very skittish very very skittish and you basically just have to use the lay of the land to get in close enough to get your shot you have to take your time it, it's a hard video for me to make because it's very hard to record you wh when you're stalking something on foot You have a second or two seconds to get your shot when you're in catapult range when you're in You know what I mean w w when you're within 30 foot or something it gets skittish. It doesn't sit for long and We have good permission around here myself and Paul and we can hunt out of the vehicle We get more shots and we're able to record the shots in the car a lot easier you know I can't lug this camera stand around with me and see something you know 35 foot away and then expect to set that all up angle it zoom in then take out my catapult load it aim and shoot you know it's not it's not viable it's not a viable thing it's not something I can do unfortunately so I hope that answers your question it's just patience it, it, it's it's not really a, a Anything that you get from being a skilled catapult shooter, it's a, a skilled hunter knows how to stalk prey. You want to use your landscape and try and work it that way. Right. What's your band set up for target practice shooting as opposed to your hunting bands? Well, I use GZK Green and I move around on it quite a bit. So I'll go up thicknesses and down thicknesses. And I'll go up tapers and I'll go down tapers. It just depends on exactly what I'm doing. Like for Cheltenham, when I won the ESF Pro 10 meter, I was shooting a very light taper. I was shooting 0.54 green, 20 to 14 millimeters taper. Um, hunting, I'm shooting 0 0.62, 0 0.66. If it's very cold, 0.72. Um, I've been liking 10 mil tapers a lot more recently, whereas I used to shoot 6 mil tapers. But to answer your question, yeah, I don't like a jack of all trades band. I like a band designed for purpose. You know, a jack of all trades band, in my opinion, so if you want one band for everything, and I've tried it many times before, I've been doing this a long time. You'll find the Jack of All Trades band will be too heavy, slightly too heavy, to be a good target band, and slightly too light to be a good hunting band. Now, there's exceptions to that rule, but you know, having won events in England um, at the highest European level, I can tell you you're better off with a specialised target band if you want to be a 10 meter if you want to be you know up there at 10 meters if you want to be competitive you know there's no sense in going in with something that's got the power to kill at 
25 meters. You don't need it. You just need to hit the target. So hope that answers your question. Yes, I won't use the same band for everything. I'll use light stuff, something light enough to carry the ball 10 meters flat and no more. And then for hunting, I'll try and get as much speed as I can for a reasonable, sensible draw weight so that I can still ping them headshots easy, you know, so that I'm confident in every headshot that I take up to 15, 20 meters. Is it possible to hunt with 9 mil steel? Alexander Pearson. Yes, Alexander, it is. Hello, Chris. Is it worth is it worth it to learn at least half or full butterfly styles when primarily hunting tough game for slingshots? I live in the United States and eastern red fox squirrel is larger than greys. I know shot placement is key, but determining weight power is also a significant factor. No, it's not worth it to learn half butterfly or full butterfly, in my opinion. You don't need it. Unless you're taking really long range shots, which I don't think anybody should be doing with a catapult. Um, yeah, I know guys. I know guys with a face anchor that have killed. Uh, foxes, red foxes, canines and cats, you know feral cats, so no you don't, I don't think it's worth it personally because this here statistically this draw is the most accurate style, statistically, obviously there's exceptions to that, you know there are some fantastic shooters that shoot with a longer draw, you might find if you do want to invest the time and do it, don't get me wrong, there's benefits to it. I just personally, I started off shooting back here. Practicing on your catch box, you'll think, this is good, I'm just as good doing this back here as I was drawn to my face. It's whenever you start elevating, all your angles significantly change compared to your face anchor. It's just a harder thing to master and you know you're better you're better with the accuracy in my opinion so that was a good question i, I enjoyed that i hope that answer helped you what size ammo do you, do i use i use eight mil steel for everything more than capable of hunting the game that i want to hunt and it is a very good competition ammo. What bands give harder impact? <laughs> That's a loaded question. If you want something powerful, you go for a thick band with a wide taper and a big heavy projectile. That'll give the hardest impact. Whether you're accurate with said setup is a different question. Just wondering, what's the best cheap slingshot? Um, wasp, wasps really, really good. You get some good Chinese ones for cheap, but there's there's so much crap in China that you can buy on AliExpress and wish on these websites. That you're probably better off just going to Simple Shot, Wasp, Pro Shot, some of them companies. What type of shoulder bag have I got and where can I get one? Thanks. I've got a GZK one. I don't know if he still sells them. Henry Russell. Yeah, it's a GZK bag. It's a great little bag, $17. It's a perfect little hunting bag. How, how can we avoid hand slap? I usually suffer it when shooting OTT, even when I think the ammo and bands are matched correctly. Because of this, I shoot TTF these days. It's a number of different things. It, it can be poorly matched ammo and bands, it can be your pouch, it can be your ties, it can be the way you're releasing your shot. The best thing to do if you want to shoot OTT is to get a frame of clips because then your bands start on top of the fork tip and not the front. 
so they don't flick around and hit the hand more. That's what I found anyway. How to shoot accurately? Give me tips. Right. How do you shoot accurately? Pick your stance, pick your draw, pick your pouch hold, where you're going to hold, hold it in exactly the same place every time. Pick your draw, pick your anchor point, controlled movement onto your target, and smooth release. That's pretty much it. Just need practice muscle memory. What is your preferred slingshot for beginners? Is it better to use OTT or TTF? Um, whenever anybody asks me for a beginner slingshot, the first thing that jumps to my mind, and has been this way for years, is the Simple Shot Scout. I don't think there is better slingshot on the market for beginners to this day. And there's actually a smaller version available now as well if you guys want to check that out. Hi, what do you do if you're right handed and want to shoot the slingshot in your left hand but your right eye is the weak one? Would you be better to change hands or is there a way to use the left eye? Greetings from Germany. So, I would say close your left eye and always aim with one eye because at the end of the day it's going to be easier to close your eye as opposed to swapping hands which is a very tedious thing to do i done it years ago i shot right hand hold for years no for a year and i was terrible i was a terrible shot 2011 and i shot that way for a full year and then i watched one of bill hayes's videos and i was like you know what i'm going to give that a go shoot under my dominant eye and best thing ever done but you know they're your two options change hands to shoot under your dominant eye or close your dominant eye mark miller what's it like being a superstar it's pretty good mark i'm not going to lie it's, it's it's awesome paul hampson hi pal i've been shooting 0.66 dzk orange picked up some green 62 from wasp slingshots going to try it out with the raptor 7 mil at the moment what taper would you recommend uh 18 to 12 0.62 with 7 mil or 15 to 10 something like that paul what's the biggest animal you've ever taken down with a slingshot i haven't took down any big animals with a slingshot i'm not going to lie i haven't shot anything that i feel like i shouldn't be shooting or i don't have the power to kill out right you know, I don't want to make things suffer, but I know guys that have shot red foxes, shot feral cats. You know, there's stories about guys on YouTube killing deer and stuff with them. You know, Jörg Sprav, the Slingshot channel, has proved how powerful that you can make one. So, really, the sky's the limit. If you can pull it back and let it go, you can, you can hunt it. Could you send me a catapult? No. <laughs> Does no taper significantly increase band life? Italian Badger. Yes, it does. It also increases your draw weight and decreases your speed. So, straight cuts are no good. What taper would you recommend for 0.62 green and 8.7 mil steel? 23 to 17, 25 to 20, something like that. What are the green 66 like? Yeah, they're very good. Richard Walker, Green 66. Green JZK is the best band going, in my opinion. You'll not get a better band. For speed, power, um, resistance against the cold, band life, it's the best for me. How do you stalk pigeons and squirrels without scaring them off? Back to answer number one. Stalking is a whole different thing in its own. You have to use cover, you have to use the lay of the lamp. Paul McBurney, who is that other sexy man that appears in your videos? <laughs> uh, I don't know who he is, he just follows me around. Gene Jackson, does it help to twist the pouch when shooting OTT? I know people do it with PFS, not sure it's going over the top or still trying to go through the box, confused. Gene, no it doesn't really help at all. In fact it can be detrimental because the thing about the thing about consistent shooting is performing the shot consistently the same every time. 
So if you're adding a twist to your pouch, it's just another variable that you have to think about. And it's not necessary. It's only necessary when shooting PFS. And then even then, it's, it's not really necessary. So that's a whole, a whole other thing. Just keep everything square and true and lined up. And just focus on your release and you know, that's unnecessary. What to start with and how to build skills. Rick Grimes, love your username. What to start with? Start with a simple shot scout and practice your form, your form of performing a shot and be scrutinize your form and how you are performing every shot. Record yourself. Watch my tutorial, watch Bill Hayes' tutorial, watch Simple Shots' tutorial, watch Zach Fowler's tutorial, watch Gamekeeper's tutorial. Take it all in. <laughs> Think about everything without thinking too much. Do you have any suggestions on creating your own bands to use on a natural fork? Yes, I do. Go and look at my how-to section. What? This is a foreign language, but I think it's what do you prefer, OTT or TTF? I can shoot both as good as the other. I've won events shooting OTT, TTF, pinch grip, race grip, hammer grip, you name it, I've done it. How to buy that slingshot? Contact me on my Facebook page. That's the Titan Hunter he's talking about. Hi Chris, a question from Pakistan. Are you hunting all day long or do you have another job? Turn 11. May God guide you and show us a true path. Thanks. No, I'm not hunting all day long. I'm a bricklayer. And lately I'm a catapult maker as well. Where are you from? I am from the north of Ireland. Hey, I may have asked before, do you switch to straight wrist when you shoot OTT, especially for small fork gaps like rap raptors? Richard Guest. Do you switch to straight wrist? I, I tilt forward a little bit. But I can still shoot square on. I tilt forward a small bit. I'm shooting my Titans now and I've got slanted tips. So I will tilt them as much as it's slanted, if you know what I mean. Is it normal to have to aim low with your reference point under the target in order to hit something with slingshots? Should you always be able to put your reference point bang on target all shots from the same distances so drop doesn't factor in? Some frames I have, I need to aim about one inch low, just wondering. Yeah, this is the age old thing, the width of your frame. So if you're aiming low, if you're aiming an inch low, if you had a wider frame, it would bring your reference point up to meet your target, so your reference would be bang on. Or if you got a Chinese catapult with adjustable sights, you can, you can work with it that way. So, the wider your frame is, the lower your anchor will be. And the narrower your frame is, the higher your anchor will be. If your shots are going low, wider, widen your frame. You shoot a wider frame. Right guys, that is pretty much it for the questions that I got a couple of days ago. I hope that helped some of you guys. I enjoyed reading them, getting them. I hope it helped you when I answered them. And as always, thank you for watching. Stay tuned because I'm going tomorrow to do another hunting video and we are going to do an awesome 20k subscriber giveaway. So guys, thank you very much and I will hopefully be talking to you soon.